how to negotiate a better deal. You can. First of all, if a lender comes to you and says, sign this guarantee, and by the way, bring along your wife or your husband or your partner. Don't bring them along. Don't, 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 don't. Say no. If you give a financial statement to a lender, I want it to be yours alone, not with your spouse. We're separating the obligations out here. If a lot of money's involved, a lawyer can work with you on it. But let's narrow the scope of the personal guarantee. Here's the most important thing. If you sign a loan, and this is very common when I can see there are a number of product companies here where you may have assets, inventory in your business, right? Receivables in your business. I want you to ask that lender to make a stipulation. So if you pledge a savings account in support of that loan, I want you to insist that if something goes wrong, the lender has to turn to the inventory first, not your savings account first. Does that make sense? Turn to your customers. Get them to pay your bills first. I don't want the easy solution to go to your personal assets before your business assets. Does that make sense? You can ask for this. You can insist on this. This is all about making you smarter shoppers for cash for your business. If you don't ask, you don't get. They're not going to offer it. But at that moment when your business is cooking with gas, I want you to be precision-based and ask on purpose. Right? Can we do this? Yeah. You can even ask for, to negotiate partial, partial guarantees, right? And the best way to unload a personal guarantee in re lending relationships is to just move your account to another bank that wants your business. You're always shopping, always shopping for the cheapest source of cash. Now I'm going to own up to something. And we just got a note from somebody, a female entrepreneur. I've been in the venture finance community for over 20 years. Women don't ask. We are too loyal to the banks where we have our personal checking accounts. We don't move. We don't ask. We don't negotiate. And yet, I think women are pretty awesome shoppers. Shopping for cash, right? Being un afraid to move it when there is a better deal. This is empowerment, and you can do it, right? Any comments out there on that? No, I mean, Cassius was asking that question earlier very specifically about the challenges that women in the, in the marketplace face, because they are, there are certainly anecdotal evidence, but I think you would agree that, that there is a discrimination against women business owners to some degree with certain banks. Um, yes, on certain banks. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about microloans that are specifically set up, many of those organizations, to lend to women. But I will say this, coming from the venture capital community, um, less than 5% of venture capital goes to women-run businesses. Now, is there some discrimination in that? No. We don't send in our business plans. So if the numbers kind of work against us, and so that's why I am here to goose everybody, to be that catalyst. If you want the dream to achieve the dream, you got to ask for the cash, right? You got to ask for it in order to get it. Now, we have three lady business owners in our front row yeah. today. So, I mean, is this a challenge that you fa faced or that you felt um, intimidated by? Or you, or you thought, you know what, I'm going to go out and I'm going to ask? I would say intimidation completely. Yeah, yeah very, very, very definitely. But you got so how I'm talking to you today, is this starting to make you feel like, gosh, I can adopt a more confident attitude because I'm going to know more about what to ask for? Uh, I have to be frank. I am flabbergasted at your frankness at where we're going to go with this stuff. It, uh, uh, I honestly thought we were going to be kind of like, well, just go use more credit cards and Oh, help no. yourself. We but go deep you're, and you're we go big. You're definitely going deep. This is great. We, yeah, it's the details that matter. And when you are unafraid 
to ask what does this mean and by the way can I have a better deal you'd be amazed at what you can accomplish and what I will say is this the number of funding resources on the debt and equity side that are available today versus 20 years ago 10 years ago is completely uncomparable there is cash out there and there is a clear desire to invest in innovators, creative people like you. Because we are the future of the, the economic engine, yeah. Um, but this kind of like a chicken and egg syndrome. To get the cash, I need to hire someone to help me write the business plan. That's not my skill set. So how do I deal with that? Mm -hmm. OK. I get this question a lot, like uh, even for um, men and women who have the cash to have somebody else do the business plan. First of all, you don't need a 20 or 30 page beautiful business plan that's bound and has right. lovely pictures, no. As we go through, you're not going to see a full business plan on the action steps of what you need to apply for most loans. Um, an executive summary on the investment side is probably more what you're going to need. But you're going to be amazed. And actually, in one of our bonus materials is a full chapter of my upcoming book all about executive summaries. And what's an executive summary? A three to five page outline of who your customers are. I know you can write a paragraph of who you want to sell to. I know you can write a paragraph on how much cash you're asking for. I know you can add a paragraph of how you're going to market your company. So maybe 20 paragraphs, can you do that? I think so, right? And in our bonus materials is absolutely the guidance for you to put together your own executive summary to present to investors. It's there for you. So you, I don't want you thinking you have to um, pay somebody else to write the business plan for you. Because I bet if you outline, OK, this amount of money, I'm going to de deploy this way, um, what you're raising is something I've heard so often before. I put these as kind of like roadblocks. But it's like a mental roadblock from you. Like, oh, I can't get this because I can't get a business plan together. Oh, I can't apply for this because of this. No, 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 no. Let's find out how much cash you want. We're going to learn about where it's best for you to present your company, your idea, your opportunity to. And let's wait for them to say, this is what we need from you. You may be amazed that what is required for you to deliver is far, far less than what you expect, at least initially. right? Now, if you are asking for a $5 million investment, and I'm going to probably dial it back as a first round, right? Um, expect some questions about your industry and your marketplace. It's more likely you'll have discussions with investors, and they're going to learn more about you and your opportunity from you directly than reading a business plan. Very often, I get these frustrating letters with lots of exclamation points, all caps. I know they never read my business plan. And I'd have to say, you're right. They're waiting to meet you and hear about it from you. Because they hate saying, wow, I put it in the business plan. And then they asked me a question that was you know, answered in the business plan. Does that help you out? Yeah, Don't let one document be the reason not for you to pursue some cash. Can we make that agreement? Yep. OK. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Nobody's going to be, everybody's going to be scared to now <laughs> ask me <laughs> something. No, but this is great to talk about it, right? Um, I just want to really emphasize that you don't always necessarily have to take the deal terms first presented to you. 